Well, welcome everybody uh, to the Friday, June 19th, 2020 session on MRSC rosters. Uh, we're delighted today to have Tara Anderson joining us today with the rosters program at MRSC. My name is Tiffany Scroggs and I manage the Procurement Technical Assistance Center. Our job is to provide no cost advising to businesses interested in selling to the government. And so there's a PTAC near you and you can reach out to them and they can help you understand how to do business with the government. I see a lot of familiar names on our attendee list. So I know a lot of you are already working with a PTAC near you. Um, for those of you who are not, please reach out to us and we look forward to serving you and helping you figure out how to navigate government contracting. And a big portion of government contracting are the rosters programs that are set up um, throughout the state. And the biggest one by far is the MRSC roster. And um, so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Tara Anderson. Everyone uh, here today is welcome to use the chat function or the Q&A function to ask your questions. And I'll interrupt as we go along or we'll save them to the end. Um, so with that, take it away, thank you. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, so thank you, Tiffany. Thank you, PTAC, for having me here today. Um, and thanks to all of you for being here. And we'll go ahead and jump in. I know that some of you are already members, but I'll go ahead and introduce myself anyway. I might have met some of you at events when events used to happen. Um, my name is Tara Anderson. I'm the Rosters Program Manager. I've been managing this program for um, about five years now. Um, so I'm going to be walking us through uh, what the program actually is and why it's important to you. And hopefully for those of you who are already members, just providing some helpful reminders. Um, as Tiffany mentioned, you can send your questions in. She'll interrupt me and we'll get to questions as they're relevant. And then some questions we might just uh, address at the end. So go ahead and see. All right, so what we're going to cover today is essentially a broad overview of what MRSC rosters is, um, where it fits in to the procurement process or contracting process for agencies and for you. Um, and then we're going to talk about the basics of how your business can get signed up or how you can renew, which is very simple. Um, and also just touch on some important sections of the application for MRSC rosters. And we'll also talk about how public agencies use MRSC rosters to search for businesses. So essentially, uh, in a nutshell, um, MRSC rosters is a self-sustaining service that is provided by the nonprofit Municipal Research and Services Center. So that's where we get the fun acronym MRSC. <laughs> and rosters is just another word for a list. So we manage these eligible business lists for over 600 different public agencies across the state of Washington. Um, so public agencies will use this to manage their individual public works rosters, consultant rosters, and vendor rosters. And this means that businesses like yours can create an account and get registered with multiple public agencies using one application. Um, traditionally, you would sign up individually with each agency, and some agencies still do it that way. Um, but as Tiffany mentioned, a lot of agencies in Washington State are using this for their roster service, which makes it easier for you guys because you don't have to go to each individual uh, agency's website. Um, so let's talk about what agencies are using the MRSC rosters. Like I mentioned, over 600 cities, counties, special purpose districts are using this. So that's going to include school districts, fire districts, um, conservation districts, as well as you know, cities like the city of Olympia, counties like Thurston County, Pierce County, and so on. Um, and you can check out the full list of agencies who are using this service if you go to the website at mrscrosters.org and click on the linked number on that homepage. Then you can sort of see who in your area is using this. Um, we have about 20 to 30 new agencies joining every year. So that does mean that the opportunities 
grow every year and we do have a lot of businesses in the system so competition also grows just to be transparent but um, still good a good thing to get registered on uh, because this is something when these agencies are using a roster contracting process they're going to come to their individual roster exclusively to search for eligible business so with that being said, I want to touch on what a roster contracting process is. Um, so there are generally two approaches to uh, public works contracting. There's a full bid process or a roster process. And a roster process can be used for um, small to medium sized projects. Generally for public works projects, that's going to be 350,000 and under, though different public agencies do have different uh, limits there. Um, in the full bid process, an agency is going to put out a formal advertisement. They're going to collect bids that way and then reach out to respondents um, but if an agency is choosing to use and able to use a roster contracting process they're going to visit their list or search their list whether it's with us or it's their own that they maintain um, they're going to look by service category or need and then they're going to contact the businesses who are already on that list and deemed eligible for their uh, bid uh, proposals or um, estimates so and in this case it's just important to remember that these these opportunities aren't advertised which is why it's so important that you know about rosters and you know that you need to be signed up and you need to be active um, in order to be considered and contacted um, so moving on I will now go into how businesses join MRSC rosters, and this is also where I'm going to speak a little bit about uh, important um, application sections. Um, and I'm sure many of you have questions about these, and some of them might be individual, like really specific to your own application or account. And so if they're really specific to you, I would encourage you to reach out to me directly. Um, it's usually easier to address those questions one on one. Um, so moving on, when you are registering with MRSC rosters, it's a pretty simple process. You're going to go to the website, um, click on the businesses tab, and just go ahead and create an account. You'll be sent a link um, through an email that will allow you access to your application that you'll then fill out and submit to us for review. And we review those new applications every two to three business days. So it's a pretty quick turnaround. Um, if there's something missing or we have a question about, for example, your, your L&I status, then we'll send you a follow-up email just asking for clarification. Um, and then, you know, if you are working on a tight deadline and you need some kind of expedited review, uh, so that you can get on an agency's roster faster, just reach out to us directly by phone or email or submit a customer contact form. Um, and we're, we're happy to expedite that process in those situations. Um, and then, yeah, like I mentioned, you do have to renew once a year. So it's not too much of a burden and it's pretty simple um, to renew. You just log into your account, click your renewal button, uh, confirm your information is up to date. So you'll go through the sections and edit anything that's old uh, and then just submit and you're done. Um, I do want to say we do send out reminders. So it's, you know, it's hard to miss, but if you do find that you've forgotten to renew, all of your account information still stays in the system. So once you log in and renew, you'll reactivate and everything will still be there. So you don't have to start from scratch or create a new account. So like I mentioned, I just want to touch on some of the application sections. And this is a pretty broad overview, but it's important to just sort of have a sense of what, you know, especially those of you who are just signing up for the first time, kind of have a sense of the information you might want at your fingertips when you're getting started here. So when you first are uh, starting the process, you are going to be selecting your roster type. 
Um, and so we have the consultant roster, a vendor roster, and a small works roster. You can select one or multiple options. That will determine what service categories you're able to select later on. So in a couple slides, I'm gonna talk about, or it might be the next slide, but I'm gonna talk about what specifically you can look for on a small works versus consultant versus vendor. Um, roster as far as service categories and how we would define those. Um, we do have also the classifications and licenses section. Um, again, this is really important, especially for those of you who aren't sure if your information is up to date. You want to make sure you're logging in and making sure those classifications and licenses are not expired. Um, that is something that I get feedback from agencies sometimes, you know, they're they don't like it when they see expired information. It makes their job harder. Uh, so I would just encourage you all to, even if it, you're not due for renewal, periodically visit your application, especially if you know of an opportunity maybe that's coming up. Um, just because you know you, those things can expire, you're not really aware, and then that might hinder your experience in, in working with an agency. Um, and we also have the certification, I'm sorry, the insurance section. Again, this lumps into the classifications and licenses. So just make sure those, those items aren't expired and that you have the correct required insurance in there. And there is a sort of a, a requirements section on the website that you can explore a little. We're not experts in the amount of insurance that you need. So we do get the, that question sometimes, you know, how much errors and omissions insurance am I required to have? Well, we don't really have that answer. We usually are just going to say, talk to your insurance rep and figure that out with them. They're the experts. Um, so just be aware of that. And now here, yes, certification. So this is, becoming more and more important to agencies that just for their own reporting um, and they need to know if you are a, a federally you know, disadvantaged business, if you're minority owned, if you're women owned. So if you are, please do make sure that you're keeping this information up to date, that you're entering it in. And if you are self-certified, you can still enter that into this field. Um, and I would encourage you to do so if you are self-certified. Um, there's also the Statement of Qualifications section. This section is optional for small works businesses. Um, so those of you doing construction or maintenance, uh, but for consultants or folks offering professional services, it is a required field, it's a required document. Um, if you're curious about seeing a sample document, I can provide you with one. It's going to vary based on your business, the sector that you're in. Um, but also I know PTAC is a great resource and they've helped a lot of businesses, you know, compose a great statement of qualification. Uh, so that's another wonderful thing to keep in mind. Uh, also, you do want to upload a new statement of qualifications annually. It does need to be up to date. The agencies need to see your most recent and it needs to be of the year. So don't forget to, to check on that as well. I know that sometimes I'll be, you know, just poking around in the database and I'll see businesses who haven't updated their statement of qualifications since like 2015. Um, and maybe things haven't really changed for that business, but the agencies who are reviewing the statement of qualifications, they're, they're gonna see that as a red flag. So you should see that as a red flag too, and just, yeah, uh, keep that up to date. Um, and it's always good to revisit, <laughs> keep things fresh. Um, so next I wanna talk about the service categories. And like I said, this is where I'll touch a little more on what it means to be on the small works versus consultant versus vendor roster. Um, so in this section, you are able to select, obviously, the services that you provide. Uh, the list is quite long, um, and so that can be a challenge, but know that you can edit at any time. You can always return to your application. So that's something that's not permanent. Once you've selected your categories, you're not 
set in stone. You can always change. Um, and also, I will encourage you to submit uh, requests to us if you see that there is something missing. So if you provide something, you think it's a pretty general category that other businesses probably would benefit from as well, uh, please send us that feedback. We do periodically add new categories. Um, so the categories you get to select from are going to be determined on the roster type that you chose at the beginning of the process. So again, we have the small works roster. Again, that's for construction oriented businesses, such as construction, um, building maintenance, remodeling, road work. Um, and we have the consultant roster, which is primarily for architecture and engineering, surveying, things like that. But it also includes design and planning and consulting type services like environmental consulting or IT consulting. Um, it can also include workplace training. So if you're offering you know, legal or financial type services, you would uh, look on the consultant roster. Um, and then the vendor roster, lastly, is for equipment, materials, supplies, and purchase services, um, which can be like mechanic work. Uh, this can be sort of a gray area when it comes to some of these purchase services. Different agencies will sometimes look to the vendor roster for um, janitorial work, for example. Other agencies will look to the small works roster for janitorial work. Um, it really depends on how their, their processes work within their organization, how they're interpreting the RCW, um, and whether or not they determine if prevailing wages are required or not. And I'm not an expert on that. Um, I would just say, like, know your customers. Um, if there are agencies that you are interested in working with, it's always great to reach out to, to them directly and just check in and see what it is that they require on a more specific basis. And I think that um, PTAC is, you know, they might have some great insights into that as well. Um, hey, but, we do yeah. have a question. Um, back, okay. up, back up to the categories conversation. Uh -huh. um, we have a, questions from Rosa and Joyce about specific categories of businesses that they aren't finding. And the first one's translation and interpretation, and the other one is general consulting, like accounting services. What happens, um, what do you recommend for people who don't see the category? Yeah, um, great question. So first I'll say we do have categories for accounting and for, I don't know if, it's trans, if it says translation specifically, but it's language services. Um, those are both on the consultant roster. They're probably listed under miscellaneous. Um, well, accounting is probably under the finance. So there's a finance consulting main category that's where you would probably find the accounting um, subcategory that you can check the box for. And then language services, I believe would be under a miscellaneous. Um, so if you have trouble locating those, that is understandable because the list is long. <laughs> um, you can contact us, we can help you out. Or if you just do a quick like control F search, you should be able to find it um, by keyword. But if you do have categories that aren't represented, that is when you would submit a suggestion to us. Um, and there is a link. It's kind of hard to see in the screen, but you can click to suggest a category. Um, and that's a form that will allow you to submit to us. Otherwise, call us, email us, submit a contact form on the website with your suggestion. Like I said, we do add new categories periodically. We haven't done it for a little bit. Um, we've just been a little bit strained with our, with our customer service demands, but um, coming to summer is usually a time when we start reviewing some of those requests and have the opportunity to add new categories. So now is a good time. If you have that on your mind, just jot down that note or open your, <laughs> open your email and shoot me an email right now um, or chat it in and I'll just grab the, grab the feedback in the chat box and I can, I can run with it. So uh, does, that, does that help? Um, yeah, I wonder on that topic, if we have more time, what, what your mm -hmm. opinions are. You know, sometimes it might be a category that's not listed because government's not looking for it. 
And so, um, you know, kind of adding a, a bunch of categories that are obscure to the government customer, mm -hmm. I wonder how effective that would be. Yeah, I mean, generally how I go about determining whether or not we add a category um, is I, you know, I'll, I'll do some research. I look at other rosters and see if those categories are or are not represented. Um, I look to see if there's something that's similar already represented that that would fall under that agencies would more likely search by. Um, and then I also, you know, here at MRSC, I'm surrounded by consultants. Um, I'm kind of an anomaly here at running this program. Other folks in the office are working directly with government agencies across the state doing policy research, um, legal advice and procurement and purchasing advice. And so I have uh, my pal Judy Isaac, she's our purchasing and contracting expert. And so what I'll do is I'll bring the list to her. Um, once I've sort of pared it down based on my research and get her insight. And so she's the one who essentially is like, oh, they're not going to look for this. This is legitimate. This would be better worded or placed here. So that's kind of the process. It, it goes through some iterations. We don't, we don't just add everything. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, submit your feedback, submit your suggestions. That's not a guarantee that we'll add them, um, but we'll consider them, right? Um, That's helpful. We'll consider them very thoughtfully. <laughs> yeah, you'll consider them through the eyes of whether or not they'll be a useful category to add. Yeah, Judy, Judy Isaac. I mean, she like she's she's you know constantly talking to agencies. She's worked in the field. She she knows she knows the customers, especially on the agency side, very well. Um, she knows that that arena. She's an expert, right? So, yeah, uh, we have that perspective, and it's definitely something that we consider before adding new category. We did have a couple more questions come in. Uh, mm -hmm. Colleen asks, which roster would personal services, such as marketing, other administration, contract work, be in? And are all types of personal services, as defined in the RCW, in one roster or another? Generally, um, yeah, so marketing and that kind of thing that's going to be under the consultant roster and, and personal services are mostly going to be under the consultant roster as well. Um, if, you're, if you're talking about like personal professional services, right? So like I mentioned, if you're doing staff trainings, you're doing marketing consultation, you're doing technical writing, um, that kind of stuff is all going to fall under the consultant roster because that's where we're we have all of the uh, personal and professional services listed as well um, great thank you but, okay um, anything else or should we there's one more but I, I'm gonna okay. wait wait till the end so keep yeah. going yep. yeah okay great so um, the next thing I want to touch on within your application is the uh, public agency rosters selection um, some of you are familiar with this but this is where you get to choose who you want to be listed with. So obviously a very important section, which is why I want to highlight it. Um, the agencies are grouped by county and listed alphabetically. A lot of them are going to be by their proper legal name. So just be aware of that. Um, it's not necessarily going to be their common name. Um, but within this, you can select up to nine different agencies to be listed with for free. If you decide to check, you know, check 10 or more, up to 604 boxes to be listed with 10 or more agencies, there is a small $10 administrative fee that is applied. That is an annual fee. Um, so just be aware of that. Uh, and also know you can, you can change your selections up at any time. Um, there's also the option to use the enhanced membership, um, which, allows you to select to be listed with uh, groupings. So if you are located in Pierce County, but you want to select everyone in Pierce County and everyone in Thurston County and everyone in King County, because that's the area that you serve, you can just check those groupings. Um, that is considered enhanced membership because it's faster. Um, but also as new agencies join in each of those places, they're automatically added for you. So it's a kind of an expedited feature um, that just makes your experience better. That does come with a fee. 
So that starts at $75 annually. Um, and the same thing with this, with this uh, enhanced membership, you can select just to be listed statewide with everybody who's participating with the one click. Um, same thing as new agencies join, they're automatically added. So that is something to consider mostly if you're a larger business and, or you have multiple branches across the state um, and you're serving a wide range, you know, it is really important that you're not selecting outside of your service area. Uh, we do have some feedback from agencies who, you know, they're, they're out on the peninsula and they're seeing a business on the roster who does like road work, but that business is located in Spokane. Um, and that's, you know, not super helpful to them. Um, so I would just say, you know, be, be mindful as you're making your selections. Um, but yeah, uh, it's, it's pretty great. You can select many uh, to be listed on again in one place. Um, and that just makes it a convenient sort of one-stop shop for so many rosters for so many agencies. Um, so moving on, um, just a few things to remember when you're renewing or when you're signing up. Um, you want to keep an eye on your contact information. Make sure that that is up to date. Uh, we have some instances where agencies get bounce backs from emails um, because there's like a, you know, a firewall or some kind of security setting that prevents bulk emails from, you know, entering an inbox. Um, that might be at the business's level or your personal email settings, but be aware of that and make sure that at the very least you have your inbox set up to accept bulk mail from government agencies, they are sending to, you know, opportunities to many folks using one email. So it's going to sometimes be flagged as spam. So just be aware of that, check your spam box too, or your bulk mail box, um, just to make sure you're not missing things. Um, and then, uh, yeah, again, just a reminder on the contractor's licenses on your, you know, if you are an electrician, you have an electrician's license, um, making sure that all of those items are up to date and not expired in your account. Um, again, maintaining the relevant documents, making sure those are up to date. So your statement of qualifications, making sure you have a new one every year. Um, and then I want to emphasize again, since all of our agencies emphasize this when I speak to them, make sure if you are women owned, small owned, minority owned, veteran owned, that you are indicating that. Um, and you know, it's a good thing to indicate in your statement of qualifications as well. So as, as much as you can sort of emphasize that in your statement of qualifications, that, that can be helpful. But again, in your application, if it applies to you, put it in there. Um, and then, you know, of course, you might wonder about editing. And like I mentioned earlier, you can edit your application at any time. It's a pretty straightforward process. So, you know, just visit the website, um, log in. And if you forgot your username or password, let us know. We can help you out. Um, but from there, just click on your application and then click the edit icon next to any section and that will allow you to update. Save your changes, you're good to go. Um, so it's just like any other, you know, account that you might manage. Um, and this way that, you know, this way you'll have that information fresh all of the time. Um, right now we're not set up to send out alerts if, if like your license expires, but that's something that we, are planning on implementing to just like further help you guys out when that stuff comes up because I mean I myself know I, I don't I don't keep track of what's going on in my accounts unless I'm getting an email right so um, that's some good feedback we've gotten in the past and something that we're working on our developers to, to implement um, and I do want to mention that when there are changes you know if we do add new categories or new agencies do join, we are sending out emails to everybody. Um, even if you are 
you know, if you expired and forgot to renew, we're still going to alert you of those things just in case you want to know. Maybe a new agency might inspire you to renew. So um, you don't have to worry about checking in with us on those items. But at this point, it is, you know, it is your responsibility to, to check in on your application every once in a while and make sure that, that things are looking good. Um, and then I know some of you out there <laughs> mentioned you're unsure if you are a member or not. So an easy way to find out is to visit the website, click on the businesses tab at the top of the page, and then click on the registers business link, which you'll see on the right side at the, you know, on the column menu. Um, and then here you can search by your business name and you'll pop up if you're registered. So that's a, an easy way to just take a quick look and make sure you're active in the system. Um, so I just wanna point that out. So moving on, I just want to go ahead and talk about how the public agencies actually use this so that you can have some understanding of what it, it looks like on their end, how they're approaching this um, you know, the sake of, for the sake of transparency, it's always nice to know what your customers are interacting with. So when a public agency is using a roster contracting process and they use our service, what they're going to do is visit our website, log in. Um, they'll land at a, a main page where they can select the roster type. So they're going to either choose to search by a small works roster, a consultant roster, or a vendor roster, depending on their needs. Um, at that point, they're filtering, and they're going to filter by the same service categories that you all are selecting from. So when they're doing this, they can select you know, by individual category um, and just search for all businesses who provide stream restoration, for example. Um, and that might provide them with a pretty long list. So if they're looking to sort of narrow that down, they might select multiple categories and select to find businesses who match all of the selections that they've made. That's just going to give them a more specific result in the end. Um, so again, that's why it is important that you're accurately selecting your, your services and you know, making sure that you're representing yourself correctly, you're not selecting things that you don't provide, um, you don't want to end up on the wrong list and get, you know, contacted for something, have clutter in your inbox for something that doesn't apply to you. But once they've made those selections, they just click the search button, it gives them a list of businesses that are indicating they provide the service that the agency searched by and are registered on that specific agency's roster. So specifically, um, your business would appear on, on an agency's roster when you select the same category or categories that they searched for and you selected that uh, roster correctly as well. Um, and then also, you know, if you selected by a grouping, like I mentioned earlier with the enhanced application, a county grouping, you would then appear there if your service selection aligns. Um, and also with a statewide grouping, if you chose to be listed statewide, and in addition, your service category selection matches, you're going to end up on that list. Um, you're not going to be automatically notified when you appear in someone's search. It's not like LinkedIn, we're not that fancy, at least not yet. Um, but at this point, the agency is just grabbing all that contact information and then contacting you. So essentially what that looks like in a, if we're looking at the process itself, just zooming out, um, the agency searches for you, they review the applications. Honestly, sometimes they're going to review more closely than other times. Uh, different agencies have different internal procedures and policies. Um, if they are looking at their consultant roster, especially architects and engineers and other professional services, like we've talked about, they are going to check out your statement of qualifications before 
contacting you. So that's again another reason why it's important to keep that up to date. Um, once they have that list and um, they reach out to businesses directly with their uh, requests for proposals or quotes um, or qualifications. So uh, most agencies are going to reach out by email. It's easiest for them, it's easiest for you. I know that some agencies will make calls first, which is, I, I don't know how common that practice is, to be honest, but anecdotally, I know that some agencies will call to confirm interest, in part because they've had poor luck with getting responses. Um, so just keep that in mind. And again, another, another good reason to make sure that your contact information is accurate, up to date, that you have the right people listed. Um, yeah, so just a, excuse me, just a quick recap. Um, really our goal here is to help our agency members succeed in having a diverse pool of businesses, to have a, sort of the administrative burden of managing these applications lifted from them. It helps their process become a little bit more equitable and manageable. Um, you as a business, uh, we're interested in making sure that you know you have a, an easier way to connect, to get listed, and um, that's that's the reason we exist uh, for you. And you know, ultimately, it's a it's a benefit. You are competing in a pool of businesses, of course, but that's always going to be the case. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's just light years beyond the way it used to be as far as going to each individual agency's website, managing one application, renewing that every year. Um, so hopefully that, even if you've not experienced that, that, that burden, hopefully you can sort of imagine that this is, this is better than that. But we still have room to improve, don't get me wrong. Um, and again, uh, you can select up to nine agencies to be listed with for free. Uh, if you want to be listed with 10 or more, it's just $10, and that is an annual fee. Um, and just, yes, the, the projects coming through here are not advertised, and that's really, really important to remember. So even if you're kind of like, oh, I don't know if I want to be on this list or not, um, well, if you're not on the list, then you're not going to be considered for opportunities that you might be eligible for. So especially if you're, you know, if you're just serving a small area, you can sign up for free, get listed for free, um, and that way you're just not missing out. So I will say that more um, questions and answers are posted on the website in our FAQ section. There's uh, some things you can poke around and check out there um, if you're curious, but that about wraps it up so we can, open the floor up for questions. And if any of you need to sort of duck out sooner here, um, you can send me an email. So my email is here on the screen. Um, and you can, you can send me your questions that way if you need to take off. Thank you. I appreciate uh, that, that overview. I think it was pretty thorough. We do have some questions though, so let's get yeah, of course. to them. Um, is there a location to find all rosters in the state? Um, and you might be able to punt that over to Kate Hoy, because um, I, know, I know you're an expert on the MRSC one, but uh, not all agencies are using it. Is there yeah. a way to find yeah, Kate, that? Yeah. Do you want Kate to answer that? Yeah, I think that would be great. <laughs> I guess how I would answer that is there is no one button that you can go to outside of MRSC. You would have to go to individual agencies, like King County is a good example, um, to go to their website. They have their own rosters, their own ways of doing things. So you would have to visit the agencies individually uh, to see what their roster structures are like. And we can help you with that. Thank you, Kate. Kate's part of the PTAC team. Thanks for joining us here today, Kate. Um, DJ asks, how do you self-certify? And I think he's talking about self-certifying for small business. Um, but DJ, if you want to clarify that, he goes on to ask, my business has all 1099 uh, in individuals. So when it asks about employees, he technically has just himself or zero. Mm -hmm. um, but he does have six really quality 1099s. Um, how does he represent that? Um, I mean, as far as self-certification, 
that's really kind of just like an honor, you know, and the honor, it goes by the honor system. Um, oh, and DJ was asking about women owned business. Um, okay. And PTAC can answer that one too, if you, if you want to. So go ahead. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I'm not, I'm not an expert. I just know that from having conversations with agencies, they don't necessarily always need you to have the official certification. Um, you might, if you are women owned, you can claim self-certification. Also, if you're going through the process of getting certified, but you don't have that certification number yet, it's good to indicate regardless. So that's why I have mentioned and made it possible to indicate self-certified. But yeah, Tiffany, if you want to speak more to, to that, please do. Um, yeah, it, I guess it depends on the customer, what they're going to ask for. So if it's a state agency, they probably do want to see you be certified with the state. Mm -hmm. um, if it's federal, that system is totally being uh, changed right this second. And so we can talk to you offline, DJ, about the federal certification. Self-certification is going away. Um, mm -hmm. And so we can talk to you about that. Okay. And yeah, just to specify, all of the agencies using MRSC rosters are local governments. So Perfect. we don't have anyone on the federal or state level. It's all um, what we would call local governments. So counties, cities, and like I mentioned earlier in the presentation, special purpose districts. So Exactly. Perfect. Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah. Uh, a couple more questions. How many businesses are registered in the MRSC roster? And what are the relative sizes of each roster? And, and do most businesses just register locally or are you finding the businesses are doing statewide or enhanced membership? Yeah, um, we have about 6,000 businesses in the database. So, uh, you know, the rosters, the rosters vary in size. Uh, I mean, if we're just looking at big picture, the most, our most populated roster is the Small Works roster. It is also the most used. Um, the second largest roster is the consultant roster, architects, engineers. Um, and then the, our smallest is the vendor roster. That is in part because it's, a, it's newer. Um, I mean, we have, we've had the vendor roster component for about five years, but this program has been running for 10 years. So that means that the other rosters have had, you know, twice, um, twice as much time to grow. Um, so we, we don't have as many businesses on the vendor roster list at this time. Um, you know, I, I will say like the roster links, when, a, when an agency is doing a search, if they're searching for something that just isn't very common, um, their list is going to be smaller. And so therefore their roster for that service specifically is going to be quite a bit smaller. Or if it's a new service category and it hasn't had time to build up many, you know, businesses selecting that, that particular category, that roster is also going to be smaller if it's specific to that category. So uh, those are some things to keep in mind. That's why it's important, again, to make sure if you are offering something niche or very specific that you're doing your best to indicate that. Um, and if it is something that you think we should consider adding as far as a new service category, submit that feedback to us. Um, did I answer? Uh, yeah, I think so. That was, that was good. A um, couple more. Uh, what is the cost structure for public agencies? And do the agencies, can they just decide all of a sudden not to use the roster and then go rogue on their own? Um, and, and would anyone ever know? <laughs> Um, so with the agency fee structure, uh, it depends on their total capital expenditure, um, average. It's kind of a, a weird, a weird fee structure. I can't take credit for it, but, uh, <laughs> Not your fault, huh? so like small agencies, for example, a lot of our, a lot of our agencies are really small towns, right? Like Kashmir um, or Walla Walla. Well, Walla Walla is not as tiny, but anyway, we have a lot of tiny towns, right? Um, in Washington state or a small, like a fire district, for example, and they're not doing as much work. Their total capital expenditures are low. They're usually signing up at the lowest level, which is $135 a year, really cheap. 
Um, so a lot of our agency members are signed up there on that level. And then that range goes all the way up to $1,145 a year. Still not very much when we're talking about like Pierce County or the city of Spokane. Um, so it's a pretty minimal cost to our agency. Then that's intentional. Obviously, like we, we don't want to burden them um, with paying exorbitant fees. Uh, but also, you know, we're not we're not offering like a super fancy software. It's a very simple infrastructure that, that we've created, um, which is part of the appeal, but also part of why we can keep the cost down. Um, agencies join, they have two different uh, windows during which they can join. So we have a December 1st deadline um, for agencies, which then become active in January. Um, we have a May 1st deadline for agencies as well, who then become active in June. Um, the agencies can join at those two times. If they decide to stop using the service because it's not working for them, they're not happy with the roster results, they can end the contract whenever they want to. Um, I mean, it's, it's the agency's responsibility to communicate that. It really behooves them. They're not, you know, so what, I don't know. I don't know what they do if, if that's a choice they make. I don't know how they're announcing that. I would assume they would have to publish something, you know, in the public by law because they would need to let folks know um, what they're doing, just as we publish a legal notice to announce that they're using our roster, they would have to publish some kind of notice announcing that they're either using their own roster, they are legally required to publish something along those lines per RCW, um, or if they're just not going to use a roster at all in their processes, which is the case with some agencies, they would then probably just then start advertising everything publicly as they would go through a regular bid process generally. So. Um, that doesn't happen a lot. Agencies, I mean, agencies don't just drop off randomly. Agencies might not renew if they've found it to not be helpful for them. Um, generally, we have, you know, maybe five agencies drop off um, per renewal period, um, but then we have 20 to 30 new agencies joining every year. So when when agencies join, we send out announcement. We, we haven't practiced sending out announcements for agencies who do not renew, um, in part because those agencies should be somehow legally announcing that decision on their own because they have to be transparent with, with those processes. <laughs> so yeah, that I hope that. that. Yeah, so I think the advice would be just to keep an eye on your list there of agencies use, using the rosters because that's constantly updated. Um, as well as any e-blasts that you guys send out are yeah. able to know as well. Yeah, I know in, in uh, we had a local government where I'm at um, who, who left the roster program and then had severely inadequate competition mm -hmm. um, on their first attempt outside of the roster just because none of the businesses realized that they had done that. <laughs> and so anyway, it was quite yeah. good for a little while. Um, and they, they got it dialed in later, but anyway. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's tough. I mean, like, honestly, when, I, when an agency doesn't renew, I ask them for their feedback. I ask to understand why. And they, I mean, they have a big window of time where they can pull their roster, right? They have all that contact info. So technically, they should, they should be able to contact everyone and be like, hey, we're transitioning away. Um, right. But that's not something that, that's not a we don't offer like a transitioning away from a service. We, <laughs> we help onboard, but if, if someone is deciding not to be with us, we're like, okay, well, thanks for your time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes perfect sense to me. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I think we hit all the questions. Um, Vinny's asking, oh, is there a way to advertise our services to the agencies? Um, and that's that's a great question for the PTAC. Um, mm -hmm. what, what we don't want firms to do is to just register for the roster and sit and wait. Um, there's a lot you could be doing to build up um, that your relationships and your understanding of how government's gonna buy and what they're gonna buy. Um, and Vinny, just depending on where you are in the state, we can connect you to an advisor on that. Um, but Tiara, did you have any advice for Vinny on that? Um, no, I mean, that's what you say is, is perfect. Um, 
we don't, I mean, yeah, with rosters, you're not, you're not really advertising yourself. It is just kind of checking off a box to make sure that you are listed and um, you are active, you are able to be found and contacted. There, there's not a way to sort of do anything outside of that. There's nothing extra you can do, you know. I mean, the SOQ document is kind of one area that you can emphasize, you know, tell your story um, and, and show off your, you know, I guess your, your expertise. Um, but outside of that, there's not a way to directly contact agencies through us to, to advertise to them in that manner. So. Great, thank you for that. And yeah. um, so, yeah, Vinny, work with your local PTAC on a strategy yeah. for marketing to government. We'll help you out with that. Uh, very good, that concludes all of our questions. And I'd like to note we are eight minutes ahead of schedule. So <laughs> I'm giving the gift of time to everybody. Looks like we have one last slide, thank you. Yeah, it's um, a thank you slide. <laughs> yeah, thank you slide, yeah, perfect. Yeah, it's a very summary. <laughs> I love it. Very good. Well, I appreciate your time coming on um, yeah. and and uh, and being available for today's webinar. This session will be recorded and found on the Washington PTAC YouTube channel. Um, if you have troubles finding that, feel free to go to our website and contact us, and we'll we'll link you over to that. So, with that, thank you so much for joining us today, and um, we will we'll conclude the webinar. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, everybody.